This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I'm writing a collection of short stories. Watch for cyclists, asshole. Ah, the hipster. Sorry, I was taking a selfie while shooting a Snapchat, while periscoping that Snapchat, while Instagramming latte art. Decrying consumerism and conformity. During the 2000s to 2010s, hipster culture soared to great heights. Before eventually becoming so popular, it ironically became the one thing it sought to destroy. Main Street. You're not a hipster? No! no. Oh my god, no, I, I hate them. <laughs> so whatever happened to the hipster? Now, before Macklemore had the world singing about thrift shops, before independent coffee took over the market, the origins of hipster culture actually started all the way back in the 40s, with one man in particular. Hey now, Freddie, what you putting down, old man? You ain't coming on with the right story. Harry the Hipster Gibson. I'm talking about Harry the Hipster. New York Times dubbed Harry the first hipster of New York. The word hipster itself actually came from the word hepster, which was to describe a person who was in the know about jazz. But it would actually be a typo in a magazine in 1938, which misspelled Cab Calloway's Hepster Dictionary to Hipster Dictionary. But you see, the hipster of the 1940s wasn't like your Starbucks barista of the 2000s. What band is this? You've never heard of it. In 1957, a book was published by a man called Norman Mailer, in which he identified the hipster subculture as mainly white people integrating into black culture. Hipsters could be found in jazz bars wearing zoot suits and a broad-brimmed hat. The wider society kind of looked down upon them as these lazy, homeless vagabonds, who had developed a very distinct, nihilistic attitude to the world post-World War II. With the sudden realization that the world could end at any given moment due to nuclear warfare, a feeling of existentialism grew, and so did a disillusionment with the idea of conforming to the American ideals. There's an outlaw without a past, without a future, simply existing for himself at the present moment, regardless of the consequences or regardless of how he acts or reacts upon other people and the community as a whole. But from here, the hipster kind of fizzled out and arguably evolved into the hippie movement of the 60s and 70s. And so, quietly, the hipsters became a thing of the past. That was until the 2000s. Got on the train from Cambridge moved down to an East London flat. In the dark underground of society, a new wave of hipsters were quietly assembling their beard combs and fisherman beanies. Before we go any further with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is the number one platform for building and developing your own website. No matter what you do, whether you're a personal trainer, maybe you're a graphic designer trying to build your portfolio, Squarespace has tons of templates that you can choose from and customize them perfectly to fit your brand. On top of that, they have tons of built-in tools like email marketing, members-only content, and e-commerce. It's really quick, easy to use, and the websites look super professional. Every time in past I've ever needed to make a website, I've used Squarespace. So be sure to check out Squarespace at squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant. And to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, Use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. As middle class white people escaped their sheltered, comfortable upbringing, as they started to move into lower income areas such as Williamsburg in Brooklyn, Shoreditch in London, Silver Lake in LA, and Berlin's Nikon. Enrolling in gender studies whilst half assing a career as a painter, this new wave of hipsters were living counter to the expectations of mainstream society. And they carried with them an ideology of rejecting traditionalism, rejecting capitalism, and rejecting consumerism. I'm talking about not covering every square of populated America with houses and strip malls until you can't even remember what happens when you stand in a meadow of dust. However, before we get too deep into the mind of a hipster, let's explain how you'd go about identifying a hipster. Corey, everyone in here is dressed like a barista at Talladega. That lady has a mullet. Your typical hipster was a middle class, white, 20 to 30 year old. They were basically growing out of their emo phase and having to deal with the real world for the first time. Fashion was quintessential to hipsterism. Now the way they dressed did vary quite a bit, however there are a few iconic looks. So let's start with the fellas. For haircut, it was very common to have a man bun or a top knot. This tightly wound up, perfectly pristine looking bun. Receding hairlines of today have the man bun of yesterday to thank. However, if you weren't willing to spend a year looking homeless trying to grow out a man bun, there was always the slick back, the skin fade undercut, the quiff, the pompadour. Whatever you decided to choose, once the hours of work had gone into making your hair look perfect, be sure to then hide it away under a fedora or a fisherman beanie at all times, even when you're indoors. We then tie the whole look together with a perfectly maintained beard. And for the quirkiest of hipsters, you could even go for a moustache. And then to complete the look, obviously, you wear super skin tight jeans, rolling up the very bottom to expose your ankle for some reason. And then a nice pair of leather boots or some kind of smart shoe. So that's clothes out the way, but then we need to look in the hipster 
hipster's inventory. There we would find a pack of tobacco for hand rolling cigarettes, maybe a wooden smoking pipe if you're really fancy, a little hip flask with a cute moustache on it, a hipster beard comb, and then perhaps the Communist Manifesto on Amazon Kindle, so you can read that while drinking a flat white at Starbucks. But now for the ladies. I really only listen to like German death reggae and Halloween sound effects records from the 1950s. The female male hipster are fairly similar, but there were a few tweaks, so let's start with the haircuts. Hipster ladies loved having bangs, or a fringe as we'd call it in the UK. Sometimes you'd see it cut in an extremely neat straight line. Subtly dyeing and changing hair colour started to become popular with things like reds and purples. And then Rihanna shaved the side of her head, so that became popular. For clothing, it was more like vintage 50s women's workwear. The bold colours, the dresses, they look very quirky and well put together. But you see, aesthetics is only one part of the hipster. There was something much more vital to the identity of a hipster than just their clothes. And that was that they absolutely hated mainstream culture. Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? This hatred for the mainstream would inform their tastes on basically everything. Music, food, drink, if it was popular, hipsters didn't like it. If you loaded up your iPod in front of a hipster and showed them that you like Nickelback, they would have a visceral meltdown. They would spit their cappuccino all over you and then proceed to tell you why 80s African funk punk is the superior genre. However, this presented a problem for the hipster. Wait, if everything in Portland is weird, isn't weird normal? They were in this constant cycle of seeking out the most underground, the most core artists before they gained notoriety, got successful, and eventually weren't cool anymore. The hipster taste in music was pretty broad, but a lot of it came down to indie and folk rock. You know, you'd have people like Mac DeMarco, Bon Iver, It's Bon Iver. Tame Impala, James Vincent McMorrow, Matt Corby, as well as a love for like older bands like The Smiths and The Cure. I love The Smiths. Sorry? I said I love The Smiths. Holy In the 2000s, when the bustling new genre of dubstep started to appear, hipsters were all over that. The front man of the genre was your quintessential emo hipster, which was Skrillex, who ended up becoming about as mainstream as you could possibly get, and was quickly despised by the hipster community. There was a deep love for anything retro, antique, and outdated. I'll look it up. No, that's too easy. Let's try to remember it. You know, vinyl players, fixed gear bikes, communism. At one point, retro Polaroid cameras became so popular that the company that made them, Polaroid, who were bankrupt, ended up being revived because of the demand. And you know, failing having a real Polaroid camera, you could just download an app on your iPhone. Read a blog about the evils of corporate America? Oh, so true. Is that the new iPhone? Yeah, it's incredible. Which interestingly, Apple, despite being the biggest company on earth, they got a pass from the hipsters. I think it's probably because Steve Jobs was a hipster. But you might be there wondering, what do hipsters do in their free time? A hipster would often be seen shopping at thrift stores or charity shops. Perhaps they would attend a local concert of a small indie rock band where they would stand quietly at the bar, too cool to dance, drinking their beloved IPA. Or if they felt like they needed to do some exercise, they might attend a yoga class with goats. Before going to an independent cafe, Cafe and asking the waiter if they have any gluten-free or vegan options. Do you guys have a vegan menu? You'd normally find them riding their fixie bikes beside the beach, eating organic vegetables or shopping at garage sales. By the late 2000s, the hipster wave was in full peak. And pop culture was starting to get hip to it, with many actresses, actors and musicians who were kind of hipster. You had Zoe Deschanel, Jason Schwartzman, Shia LaBeouf. Yesterday, you said tomorrow, so just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! Hipsters somehow even started to enter the world of hip hop. Some people actually call hipster hop. With artists like Pharrell Williams, Macklemore, and then Tyler the Creator. Call me wavy, the way that I'm tapping you. All black guns like I'm going to war with Africa. They got a problem. <laughs> And even the high streets were starting to change. Very famously, there was a cafe called the Serial Killer Cafe, which served cereal, which was pretty much the main talking point of every boomer conversation. Hey, we're gonna sell a bowl of cereal, but we're gonna make it so expensive the poor people who live here can't buy it. Take two. Even cinema, there was tons of references to hipsters and you would have people like Wes Anderson which were your quintessential hipster filmmakers. However, as popular as hipsterism was becoming, no one wanted to be a hipster. Like actually being a hipster isn't such a terrible thing. The terrible thing is being a hipster. 
Not a single person would take the label as a hipster and wear it proudly. The word hipster became an insult. Everyone hated hipsters. Even hipsters hated hipsters. Well, I don't consider myself a hipster. They were known for having these snooty attitudes and like a superiority complex. V, I don't know, do you find yourself, are you a current person and you're like a trend slave? And so, despite being a massive subculture, no one identified as one. But there is a reason why no one said they were a hipster. And that's because it was antithetical to the ideology of being a hipster. Like, if your whole identity was wrapped around the idea of not conforming to a box and you were rebelling against what was popular and mainstream, then how could you be a part of a trendy new subculture? What kind of music do you think she listens to? Uh, probably jazz? Jazz. <laughs> you don't know what jazz music is? No, I mean, it's, it's what the hipsters listen to. I mean, right? The idiots are self-regarding consumer slaves, oblivious to the paradox of their uniform individuality. And so, as hipster culture got bigger and bigger, it led to an existential crisis. They had become so predictably unique that they were no longer unique. And so, it would be by the mid-2010s where we would finally reach the death of the hipster. A number of bloggers and journalists announced the death of the hipster, claiming that it had become so mainstream it had effectively broken its desired purpose. The hipster had gone from this tiny niche subculture in the late 90s to early 2000s, to now in 2020 where all of the tropes of hipsterism are just used to describe millennials. And so the term hipster became less and less used as mainstream culture embraced its values. This deep irony resulted in a study called the hipster effect, whereby there is a phenomena that cultures that oppose mainstream culture all end up looking exactly the same. And it was ironic even down to their political views. The hipster was meant to be very anti-capitalist. The hipster these days is a capitalist. Cultural rebirth, connectivity and economic revival go hand in hand. Their choices to move to low income neighbourhoods controversially led to gentrification. Now places like Shoreditch are very trendy and very wealthy. Their disdain for mass consumerism led to indie brands like Brewdog becoming mass corporations. Their protests against unethical food led to things like Whole Foods. Okay, and would you like to add a dollar donation to help hungry kids around the world? Oh, uh, no, that, that's okay. I think hipsters get such a bad rap, so bad that I'm, I won't even look at this audience and judge, but I'm sure everyone in, the, everyone in this audience is thinking, oh, I'm not a hipster though. Like, everyone in my neighborhood's a hipster. For the wider economy and culture at large, hipsters did bring with them a lot of positives. What has now been dubbed the hipster economy has found unique ways of monetizing artistic pursuits. You know, tattoo artists, opening Etsy stores, graphic designers, commissioned graffiti artists, yoga instructors, artisan baristas. You've got the hipsters to thank for this. The global specialist coffee market is expected to grow 80.7 billion US dollars. By 2027, the organic food market is expected to be worth $272.18 billion. And the craft beer market is now worth $29.3 billion. Hipsters are very entrepreneurial. They've been the driving force behind the tech startup culture, ethical and locally sourced products, and even mainstream interior design has been no doubt influenced by hipsters. Bullshit. Bullshit. Derivative. At this point now in 2023, hipsters are so intertwined with mainstream culture, you can't consider it a subculture. It can definitely be argued that hipsters are now evolving into a new growing subculture, which many people refer to as woke or wokeism, with its followers being wokies, I don't know. Which I believe has also spawned a counterculture to that movement, which you could probably call traditionalist. However, that's a topic for another video. Because you're like the coolest person I've ever met. And, and you don't even have to try, you know? I try really hard, actually. And like, despite all of the hipster bashing that took place in the 2000s and 2010s, I do have a soft spot for hipsters. Like, I can't deny it, I was definitely a hipster. I was one of the hipsters that hated mainstream hipsters. I remember specifically disliking Tyler the Creator because he was so popular. All this stuff comes around because young people are always trying to work out who they are. And it's often very easy to create an identity based on the things that you aren't as opposed to the things that you are. But as time passes, you realize more and more that disliking things doesn't make you an interesting person. I can stand here in 2023 and tell you I like Justin Bieber. I like Calvin Harris. I like Tyler the Creator. A fact that 18 year old me would absolutely hate. 
And like for sure, there are definitely critiques of hipster culture. I really don't like the nihilistic worldview. You can argue that the more radical side of the woke culture or the cancel culture stuff probably came from hipsters. But a lot of hipster culture has been very beneficial to the modern world. Be sure to join me on the Afters podcast where we discuss this topic and many more. Links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here.